I'm in San Antonio, Texas for one reason and one reason only. I'm going to put the Mickey Thompson Powerfly carcass design to the test against other leading two and three ply four drive brands available in Australia. I'm here with Ryan, one of the product evaluators here at TVTC. Ryan, this is an impressive facility. Why don't you tell us a bit about it? Well, Brad, what this is is a 1,000 acre facility. We can cover all aspects of vehicle testing here. Not only can we do on-road, we can also do off-road. And we test everything from vehicle, from manufacturers' vehicles to tires to automotive components. So we really cover the entire scope of what can be tested on a vehicle. That sounds great. I've got some uh, Mickey Thompsons with power ply that we want to test against some other leading brand two and three ply four wheel drive tyres that are available in Australia. What would you suggest that we do for those? Well, what, we, what I would suggest doing obviously first off is a dry slalom brad. What that's going to show is basically the sidewall deflection and kind of how that carcass construction can stand up to you know its other competitors. Everything from a two ply tyre to a three ply tyre is probably going to react differently. On top of that, I'd like to also do our basically dry limit handling. That's where we, in essence, take the tire and put it onto an actual race course. Now that's going to stress the tire dynamically in a way that you can't do it in any other test. And really that's going to show not only a timing component, but also a subjective component. Fantastic. So it's not necessarily just the fastest tire, it's a whole encompassing yes. score. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. I mean, you have tires that can go phenomenally fast but the controllability aspects are almost out of control like the tire becomes like a knife edge we would like to have a tire that's very linear you know one that that if it does start to slide it doesn't just give up on you it, it wants to maintain that traction level even though it has a slight sliding to okay. it sounds great what about wet handling well, wet handling we have two different tests that we can conduct we can obviously conduct a wet braking test which will show you the ultimate stopping distance and the other one that we have is our VDA course, which emphasizes, you know, wet handling of the tire itself. That's more of a dynamic situation where you're not only ask, asking the tire to stop and go, but also turn. And that can encompass everything from how much oversteer does the tire have? In other words, how much does that tire skid versus another tire? It also can indicate the response of the tire in the wet. Well, Ryan, that sounds like a really solid plan. I reckon let's get out there and we'll test some tyres. All right, Brad. Okay. So, Ryan, first test for the day. What do you got planned for us? Well, what we're going to do here, Brad, is we're going to do what's known as an asphalt slalom. Uh, what that's going to do or show is how the tyre responds to a driver's inputs. In other words, if the tyre flexes a lot, we're going to have, obviously, a slower response in the tyre. So we'd like to kind of test here is to see how effective or, or how reactive that tire is to a driver input. Now going forward, um, we're going to also try to run all the tires at the same speed. Uh, what we're going to do first is establish a control speed for the control tire. And you noticed before there is no timing equipment, so there will be some subjective you know, input from me, uh, but more or less the speed is what the speed is. So in real terms, you know, what would this relate to in a, you know, everyday driving situation? If you look at what this test is going to simulate, this would simulate an, an emergency evasive maneuver. That is, you know, there's a crash in front of you, there's a small child that's run out in front of your car and you're more or less trying to avoid it. Or let's say, you know, something falls off a large truck, yep. <laughs> you know, railroad tie, something yep. like that, and you've got to very quickly maneuver the vehicle into another lane and then back. Yeah, okay, so it's generally a, something that we could encounter any day on the road. Yes, absolutely. I mean, anytime you're driving down the highway, and I've had to encounter it several times myself, that, that is a real world scenario. Yeah, great. Okay, let's see how we go. All right, let's do this. First, we have the Mickey Thompson, which is the control tire. The speed for the slalom has been set to 58 miles per hour, or 93 kilometers per hour. Yeah. 
As you can see, the vehicle is comfortably under control through the slalom at the set speed. Up next, we have Brand G. Running at the same speed as the control tyre, 93 kilometres per hour, Brand G gets through the first markers okay, but you can see they quickly lose stability and response towards the end of the slalom. Now, Brand B. We have a similar scenario to Brand G. You can see due to the tyre's slower response, how out of shape the vehicle gets at the end of the slalom. Let's compare all three brands. Have a look at the positioning of all the vehicles when negotiating the last marker in the run. So Ryan, that wraps up the first test and well, we saw some pretty dramatic results out there. Yeah, there were definitely pretty big differences in how these tires worked. As you saw, Brad, when we started with on the control tire, I established about 58 miles an hour as a set speed to use. And that was a speed in which the tire would negotiate the slalom quite effectively without a lot of drama. Um, beyond that, once we got on to uh, some of the other tires, you saw that there was a bit more dramatic difference in them. Uh, one of the things that I noticed the most was the flex of the tire itself. Uh, some of the other tires had a bit slower response. It took a longer amount of time for that tire to do what I wanted it to. Uh, consequently, I had to also put in more steering input to make the vehicle do what I wanted it to do. Uh, leading after that, we also saw the after effect. Um, you notice that the vehicle could not maintain near the same line that I could with the control tires. Now, how that translates into real world, Brad, is if I were on a highway or something like that, all of a sudden I've used 15 feet more of real estate, which will translate into now I'm off the road. Yeah. And look, you know, you mentioned the control tire. I mean, I've noticed that we're using uh, three sets of the Mickey Thompson ATZP3 and then one set of all the other tires. Can you explain how the control tire works? Yes, I mean, what we have to establish when we're testing something, in essence, using the scientific method. In order to do that, we have to have a known at the beginning and a known at the end to know if there's any variance once we reach that last tire. We want to make sure that everything is the same throughout the test. Yep. So, Ryan, dry handling up next? Yes, Brad, that's what we're going to do next. Um, basically, we're going to go out and stress the tire and put that tire to the absolute maximum limit and then even put the tire over that maximum limit. Yep. And look, the, you know, the slalom uh, test obviously was very effective and showed, um, you know, really showed some of those you know, aspects of the tire in extreme conditions. This is a, obviously a longer course, you know, how's, how's that work? Yes, well it's a 1.3 mile 12 turn course and this proposes a different set of circumstances simply for the fact that we're dynamically stressing the tire even differently than we did in the slalom. We're going to be asking that tire to do braking and turning, we're going to be asking that tire to accelerate while turning, and we're going to be also asking that tire to transition differently than we did in the slalom. Yep. So Ryan, 1.3 miles, that's a pretty big track, that's a lot of ground to cover. Uh, can you give me a suggestion if I wanted to see probably the, yeah, the biggest variance in the products that we're testing, uh, where I might see that? Well, Brad, if I were to set up anywhere to look for that dramatic effect or those dramatic differences, I would do it at the exit of our emergency lane change. That is a point where the tire is under the most stress, and that is where you'll physically see a difference. For the dry handling test, we have taken Ryan's advice and positioned ourselves at the exit of the lane change manoeuvre. This is the best place to visually see the difference between the Mickey Thompsons and the competitor tyres. Take a look at how responsive and controlled the Mickey Thompson ATZP3s are compared to Brand G. You can see that even though the Mickey Thompsons slightly slide out, they respond and correct very quickly. 
Brand G drifts out very wide and takes much more of the test driver's ability to correct the vehicle and get it running straight again. By ghosting the vehicle with Brand G, you can see the difference in positioning between the vehicles on the track. Let's compare the Mickey Thompsons to Brand B. Like Brand G, they drift right out to the edge of the track, but correct quite well. Again, you can see by ghosting the vehicle with Brand B, you can see a big difference in track positioning. Let's compare all three brands together. You can see that the Mickey Thompson stay tight on the track and respond to the test driver's input very quickly when performing the correction compared to the other brands. Have a look at the different positioning of each of the tyre brands when exiting the lane change. Now have a look how they all end up when performing the correction of the emergency manoeuvre. Here are the timing results of the dry handling test. By timing a lap, several of the response characteristics can be looked at such as breakaway, how it recovers, how much understeer or oversteer it has and the overall balance of the tyre. Well Ryan, I can see why you call that the long course. In comparison to the slalom, that was, uh, that was amazing to watch. Just you know, so many different situations that you're guiding that vehicle through on the tyres. Yes Brad, obviously our dry handling course is going to have the most dynamic scenarios that you're going to experience with a tyre or a vehicle. Um, we pretty much have every different type of turn you're going to experience on the road and obviously you saw something that was probably the most violent example of that is our where our emergency lane change is. Yeah. Yeah, I did see that. And you know, obviously, you know, simulating an emergency lane change. Um, you know, again, real world situation we we've all been in. And uh, for me, uh, observing that, just seeing the way the different tires reacted, it was just amazing to watch. I mean, what are you experiencing when you're driving that? Brad, in that section of the course, like you said, it is the most real world scenario that you're going to come where you're basically at the limit of the tire and going beyond of it, beyond it. Um, the one of the things that we're looking at is how much overshoot does the tire have? In other words, how long does it slide for? And the other important factor that we look at is what we call recoil. That is in essence where we have bound that tire up like a giant spring and how that tire releases that energy is very, very important. You saw some tires released it very gradually, the vehicle straightened up very quickly. Other ones uh, had to use a lot of racetrack to bring the vehicle back under control. Yeah, and look, uh, the control tire, the Mickey Thompson tire, it's got the power ply technology. Um, it, I mean, to me, that, that technology just seemed to add so much value in that situation. Yeah, you did notice the tire stood up very quickly and it also dampened very quickly. It was up straight and kept going. Some of the tires, you know, not only did they overshoot, in other words, they slid for a very long time, but then when they released that energy, yeah. The sidewall, in essence, acted like a giant spring or, you know, <laughs> releasing a rubber band violently. And guess what? It took a lot, <laughs> a lot of talent that I had to bring it back under control. Yep. And, and applying that to a real world scenario is very, very easy. It's not, you know, trying to stretch it. Yep. Fantastic. Right test. So Ryan, we're on the wet handling course. Yes, tell me, Brad. Tell me a bit about this test. Well, what we do out here, Brad, is basically dynamically look at how a tire handles uh, while it's in the wet. Um, out here on this course, we have several different scenarios that people could get into every day once again. Um, we've got everything from an emergency lane change in the wet to hairpin corners to very long corners where we can actually induce the tire to hydroplane yep. and of course we have the standard transitional corners as well that's where you're turning left to right very quickly so typically with this type of test I mean obviously you know 
we've got a slight uh, shower that's uh, come through here. I mean, you're running water across this pad anyway. Is there a consistent depth? And uh, does you know weather like this, you know, with a bit with a bit of a shower, does does that affect the test result? Yeah. With it sprinkling like this, not so much. Obviously, if the rain gets very heavy, we have to stop the test. So really, you have the ability to uh, check measurements across the course. Yes, there, there's three specific areas or three specific spots we take depth measurements in. And um, as it's lining up right now, where the slight sprinkle isn't affecting it. Yeah. And do you find uh, a result, you know, obviously we've got, we're on the control tyre right now. Uh, what are the things that you're looking and feeling for as we, as we drive on the control tyre? Um, well, there's some very obvious things. We want to look at, you know, overall traction of the tyre. You know, how much grip does that tyre ultimately have? Um, not only that, we want to look at the breakaway characteristics. Now, when I say breakaway, that means at what point does the tire start sliding? Um, now, when the tire starts sliding, you may have, at times, tires that just start sliding and they're almost uncontrollable, where other times you have tires that start sliding, but they don't lose that much traction. Uh, that's a very, very big, uh, you know, thing that we look at or emphasize so Ryan, I get the impression you might be taking a bit easy on me. Maybe you think I'm a bit of a lightweight. You know, I, I want to say to you, I want to, I want to experience what a product evaluator experiences. So why don't you put me through the paces and explain to me what you're feeling and and what you're looking for, what characteristics you're looking for out of the tire. Okay, Brad. Well, what we're going to be doing is obviously experiencing several different types of corners, and the tires are obviously going to be exhibiting some fairly interesting characteristics. I'm going to basically drive you through the course and show you what's going on. Right. Okay. Through here we have our two basic 90 degree corners. That is, you know, what you would see in a typical neighborhood. Uh, the next portion of the course that we are approaching is what's known as an emergency lane change. We're going to very aggressively turn the vehicle to see if it ever wants to break loose or if it holds its traction. Through here is a long constant radius. We'll look at that peak lateral traction and in, in a medium radius corner. Now the next section we're going to always gets interesting because this is where we actually have enough speed to induce hydroplane. Now that can, of course, cause a bit of issues with people, especially in the, you know, in the real world. You'll see the vehicle start to come out. And it'll start to go sideways a little bit. Yep. And through here we're looking at, ultimately, our wet braking capability. You know, we've engaged the ABS. We want to see how well that tire stops. Now we look at some of the transitional stability. In other words, by very quickly change direction, does the tire remain controlled or does it start to step out? And through here we have an area that's where we can actually induce understeer and then see how long that correction takes to bring the vehicle back into the intended driving line. So really with a course this size, I mean it really is a large course, with a course this size you've really got the ability to put the tyre through its paces and anything it would experience in the real world. Yes. And and by doing that you're really pushing the tyre to the max. Yes. And and sometimes obviously beyond limit. We don't just necessarily want to look at those areas of, oh well it's got lots of traction. Well how does the tyre respond when it gets out of control or let's say we've maybe driven beyond our talent level. So, uh, of course, uh, everything you guys do here at TVTC, it's all about repeatable results. Yes, absolutely. We could just go out and drive on a wet pad, but it, it is good to have some objective data, such as a timing, you know, timing, and then have a set course, so you can obviously drive that consistently. The Mickey Thompson consistently returned the fastest lap times as it was producing the most predictable handling on the course. This result was achieved even though some of the competitor products have higher rubber-to-void ratios. <laughs>